Speaker. Clayton Mitchell. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Look, I was sitting there um, listening to this absolute rubbish across the House. Like a pit bull chewing a wasp, I just could not believe the absolute nonsense coming out of Palmjeet Palmer's mouth. And the reality is, this is the winter of that party's discontent because you're so disconnected from the reality when you think that it's all about the business. You forget the point it's about the people. People make business. People operate business. People are the, are the, the very thing that create economic growth and development for this country. And the whole speech was all about this is not good for the business, we can't afford it. I want to start my contribution off, sir, for New Zealand First, supporting strongly um, this bill that's been put forward by David Parker, the Minimum Wage Contractors Remuneration Bill, and talk for a moment about that very thing, minimum wage. The reality is, for some employers out there, the minimum wage, they would pay their workers less, but they can't because it's illegal. Think about that for a minute. There are employers out there that would pay less than the minimum wage if they could. So let's focus for a moment on what that $15.25 that we had um, Andrew Bailey talk so feverishly about that this party, the National Party, came into office in 2008 and took the minimum wage from $12 per hour, sir, up to $15.25. We'll annualise that. We're talking about $31,000 a year working full-time on the minimum wage at the current rate. Take your tax off that, you're taking home around $480. Your rent's around $300 to $350. How can you expect somebody to live on a minimum wage? And this party over here is justifying paying people less because they're contractors. They talk about choice. We're not talking about choice. People are forced into taking these jobs because they've got no options open to them. And you think it's acceptable that $15.25, you can pay people less because they've got the choice to do so? It's an absolute disgrace. What about talking about a wage that is sustainable? What about going back to the days when you could do a hard full day's work and get a genuine pay that you could actually sustain and live on and get by with and move forward? And they're quibbling, quibbling, saying that 1525, we're not going to justify, we're not going to support our workforce to make sure they get that very thing. And let's talk about the choice. We're talking about, in many cases, contractors who are forced to take jobs because there's no other jobs available to them. Take this job, but it's a contractor's job. In Australia, they've gone through some massive reforms to tighten up on exactly this thing, because people, not all people, and not all businesses, but people are out there exploiting our hard-working people. And they've got a, uh, a, a legislation in Australia that says if you're employed from a single source for 80 per cent of your income, then you're not a contractor. What about that, to, to implement that? Because there, this is a way of getting around the law. At the end of the day, when you are comparing employees and contractors, sir, employees get a raft of protection. They get a raft of benefits. They get four weeks paid annual leave per year. They get sick leave. They get bereavement leave. They even get KiwiSaver contributions paid to them by their employer. When you're a contractor, you're responsible for that entirely yourself. And when they're not paying you a fair day's pay for a fair day's work, then you are going backwards fast. The reality, sir, this bill is a very sensible bill. Now, we did have a number of people and submitters coming through, and the majority of those people were very responsible employers, contract, uh, con contract ease, sir, and businesses. And we also heard equally a number of people that fully supported this bill, looking after the rights of the employers and the contractors, the tr employees, sorry, and the contractors. The reality is, sir, that we have to make sure that we have got a balance, that people working in a contract situation or, an in fact, as an employee, have a balance with their, with their uh, employer or their, their contractee to make sure that they are not exploited. And the people I commend that came and spoke to us in our select committee, because there were genuine, genuine businesses out there who are absolutely not having any impact on make, making uh, any overtones towards paying people less than the minimum wage. And we commend them on that. And this bill goes in no way to disenfranchise good operators. Businesses that are actually working within the confines of the law with a moral and working inside a legal framework to ensure their workers are looked after. And some of those contractors have been working as contractors for years. 
Why wouldn't they? I, en I enjoy being a contractor working for this organisation. They look after us, and I'm certainly getting paid more than minimum wage. Commendable. But we are talking about the vulnerable workers. We are talking about the shysters, the, 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 the mongers that are actually out there doing a disservice to the good uh, will of employers in this country and businesses in this country. The ones that will take absolute advantage if they can. Like I said when I opened up, they would pay you less, but they can't because it's illegal. And the minimum wage is an absolute doddery figure. It needs to be brought back into line. 40 cents an hour on average over the last eight years of your government, that is what you're putting your hand on your heart about? You can't live off that sort of money. Nobody here could. You go and stay a night in your car and you think, well, look, I'm supporting the homeless, but I'd like to see you live off $600, uh, three or $480 a week. You will not be able to do that. Nobody can. You can't raise a family. You can't live. You can't put food on your, on your table. The reality is this government is out of touch. Chris, you are absolutely out of touch when it comes to knowing how to run a business, being involved in running a business. You live in a bubble. You've never been outside this bubble. You've never employed anybody. Or I bet you've never been on a minimum wage and, and actually lived off minimum wage. You probably were living on, on a minimum wage when you are living with your mum and dad. Try and living under the minimum wage. The reality is, sir, we need to be supporting this bill. I hope that we have sensibility to make sure that we look after um, those vulnerable workers that are actually forced into this situation. People engaged as contractors have few of the protections of the employees, and this bill is about tightening up on, those, on that, sir. Absolutely 100 per cent. We need to make sure that they, are, that they are playing on a level play, playing field. We have got um, a situation with a number of these uh, points. In my first speech, sir, I said we had some reservations with regards to the pamphlet delivery. Um, because one of the, uh, the, the offshoots from this is the fact that if you've got a, an aged population that are actually out there delivering pamphlets and they do it as a bit of a, um, a sideline, they do it to be as much as social in their neighbourhood to go and deliver pamphlets around the streets, and they might take three or four days to walk around the streets. Mrs McClintock, as she goes and talks to um, the Bradley family down the road and they stop and have a chat and a cup of tea, this bill actually caters for that. They're not going to be disenfranchised because they can employ a 16 or 18 year old on a push bike that can whiz around the entire place in the two hours flat. They want to take their time to do it. And so section 11A, um, 11A and B under, uh, yeah, it exactly uh, covers that off by saying recovery of the minimum remuneration. Specified persons may not recover minimum remuneration for time that exceeds agreed reasonable time to provide service, sir. So a negotiation can come in, and it's about fair and reasonable time. And if the speakers on the other side think that it is too hard to hold on to records for six years because that's more of a burden and cost and, and issue for those businesses, the IRD expect us to hold on to our, our, uh, all of our information for seven years, sir. So how can they justify keeping hold of your records? You have to keep hold of your records anyway. There is no downside to this bill. It's a positive bill looking after the best interests of positive businesses so that they can be um, put on the same level playing field with each other because you've got a positive contractor you know, working within the confines and the rules and regulations of this country and you've got some of those businesses that don't. Well, they, those businesses that don't under this legislation will come up and it will actually make fair trading across all sectors and making sure that we're looking after the most vulnerable people in our community. And I hope that today it gets its support. And I look forward to hearing more absolute rhetoric rubbish from that government. Chris Bishop's like a pit bull chewing a wasp now, waiting to jump up and justify that I was on minimum wage and I wasn't living with my mum and dad. Well, I have to say, I bet you you haven't employed people and I bet you've never seen the hard side of what uh, poverty looks and smells and tastes like. And oh, I'd like to see you raise a family on $600 oh, a week, $31,000 a year. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Yeah.